I believe that good food is not hard, and today we're going to take a look at butternut squash soup. When the colder weather comes around, you must add this delicious and easy soup recipe into your rotation of wintertime meals. Let's get started. First, we start with two butternut squash, two medium to large onions, which are about a pound and a half, three apples, these are gala, some curry powder, fresh nutmeg, cayenne pepper, heavy whipping cream, and balsamic vinegar. Let's prepare the squash. There's two ways I approach this. One is I just peel the outside first, then I split the rounded seeded part from the solid upper portion, and then I take that upper portion and I slice it into planks. And then I cube those into about one inch cubes. I'm trying to get fairly uniform pieces. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we want to be pretty, pretty uniform. The other way to do it is to just take the cylindrical end and just cut it down the middle without peeling it. And then we cut into these half circles. And we take each circle and just trim off the peel or skin. And then just do your best to make the pieces as uniform as possible. And then here's the seeded end. You can do it with the peel on or the peel off. This one has the peel off already, so we just cut it into these lengthwise pieces. If you had the peel on, you would cut it the other way and then just trim the peel off like we did before. But these are the peel off, so we just cut them up into uniform pieces. Then we line a sheet tray with parchment. And the parchment helps brown the squash. So we And it helps with cleanup. So we add a little olive oil, some salt, and fresh ground black pepper. And we're going to use two pans here so we can keep the squash spread out so it doesn't steam. We want it to brown for flavor. So it's a 400 degree oven. It'll take about 30 minutes. We'll check on it in 30 minutes and see how we're doing. Meanwhile. So let's uh, dice up the onions here. These are two medium to large onions. This is Vidalia's. You can use yellow or white or Spanish. They weigh about a pound and a half total, but it doesn't have to be exact. And we'll just dice these up. It doesn't have to be crazy perfect. We're going to end up pureeing the whole soup, so we just want to be somewhat uniform and have it in manageable sizes for the stick blender. And then we have the apples. We just, I just peel the apples, cut the ends off, chop them in half lengthwise. And then I use this melon baller, or you can use a core, or whatever you have. Just clean out the core. And I just chop into rough pieces. We're gonna cook these apples ever so slightly and then again, they'll be pureed with the stick blender. So as long as they're manageable, they'll be fine. There you go. Now let's get a, a big, big pot on the stove with some butter. I love onions and butter, but then I add some olive oil just for the, so the butter doesn't burn and I add the onions. And we're gonna saute these down maybe 10 minutes. We're not sweating. We're going to saute actually. So you want to be on like medium high heat. A little salt, a little pepper. And they say that every good soup recipe starts with an onion and a pure heart. So make sure you have a pure heart before you start making this. No love in your heart, no good soup. So it'll take about five or 10 minutes. And this is what it should look like, nicely browned. And we'll add the apples. And 
we're just going to cook these apples very briefly. And then we add a uh, teaspoon of curry powder, half teaspoon of cayenne. Then we're going to uh, grate some fresh nutmeg. Definitely do fresh, but don't overdo it. If your nutmeg looks like this in your cupboard, then it's probably time to buy some fresh nutmeg. So we just want to activate those spices and cook the apples a little bit. Just a couple minutes. And now let's check on our squash. This has been about 30 minutes. I did them like an extra five minutes after this and you got some nice brown color on it. It's exactly what we're looking for. So we'll add that to the pot. And then we're going to just cover the, the fruits and vegetables with this chicken stock. You see how it's just barely below the level of the, the top of the vegetables? Otherwise, we'll have a thin soup. And this chicken stock is homemade and it's super easy. And I'm going to post a recipe or a video later to show you guys how inexpensive and easy this is. And we'll simmer that for about 10 or 15 minutes. I mean, everything's already cooked. We just want to get the apples a little cooked. And then we'll bring in the stick blender, the immersion blender. It takes some effort, but we want to slowly get all this blended up. You can see it's getting thick and it starts to bubble. You can also do this in a blender, but that's a little more dangerous in my opinion. So I like the stick blender, even though it takes a little bit longer time. Then we're going to add some heavy whipping cream. It's about a half to three quarters of a cup. Just till you get the right color that you like and the thickness. This adds some really good mouthfeel to the soup and also just kind of blends everything together. You see this is off the heat because it kind of splatters. Then I like to add some balsamic vinegar at the end just for some contrast. To it. It's a very rich soup. It's a thick soup. This just kind of cuts through all that. Gives it some more depth of flavor. Look how pretty that is. And then I'll let it simmer for maybe another 10 or 15 minutes and then we're ready to plate. And then uh, for additions to the top of the soup, I like to do a little sour cream. You could also do yogurt if you wanted to, plain yogurt. I like some dribbles, drizzles, dribbles, drizzles, drops of balsamic vinegar. It didn't do very well there. And then we add some uh, pepitas, which are pumpkin seeds that have been hulled, for some crunch and some extra flavor. And there you have it. Butternut squash soup. Make it today. Appreciate you watching. Like and subscribe. Leave a comment. I'll probably reply. Probably. Enjoy.